Hello, this is Learn PHP Online with the second uh, half of the XSS attacking tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to fix the problems that I outlined in the first tutorial. So if you haven't watched that, please watch that. And um, if you just want to know how to fix the holes that XSS can be used in, then watch this tutorial, because that's what I'm going to do. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you two handy PHP functions that are built right in. You don't have to download anything. Called... Um, HTML entities and strip underscore tags. And what each of these do is easily filter out most XSS attacks. Of course, nothing is bulletproof, and there might be some crazy way of getting in, but this works against all my tries, and so I'm going to show them to you. So to use, I'm going to start off with the first one. HTML entities is a really easy way to strip out everything. So here we have a string, and it's a uh, we have an h1 and an italic tag. So right now, right now you can just see I'm defining the string and then echoing the string. So it's just going to say this has, and then in italics, tags. All in big h1. And that's all there is on the page. The rest is just uh, header information and stuff. But let's pretend this is a comment for a sec. So someone actually entered, you know, this HTML into your comment field. Now, as in my previous tutorial, I said if you can use HTML, you can most likely use JavaScript. This is bad. So we're going to get rid of it using HTML entities. And here we're going to do HTML entities, autocorrected, autocompleted. And that's all I have to do, wrap HTML entities around the string. That's the only argument we'll need. And as you can see, it just makes everything, makes your string HTML. And what that basically does is show you the source, I guess you could say. Right now, if we right-click it, you see that we get all this, um, this crap around the string. So we're getting like and lt semicolon and and gt semicolon that's and less than and and greater than which is code html code for displaying these um opening and closing little uh triangle brackets for html and that's an easy way to do it i recommend using this if you're um having like a coding type uh, forum or a coding comment thing where people are allowed to post code because my second example you're, you're not going to be able to see any of the html the second example, actually, yeah, the second example is going to be strip tags, and we're just going to, well, to do, it's the only argument we'll need to, I'll, I'm, there's more arguments, I'm going to go over those, and what that does is just completely remove the tags, so now it no longer has the h1s or the i around it, so it just displays this as tags, when it actually doesn't have tags. And this is really useful, because you can just get, you can make it strip out all the scripts, the script tags from your comments or whatever. So the people can still post HTML, but without uh, using the scripting, which allows XSS. But the cool thing about strip tags is that you, there's a second argument you can use. So you just use comma, and then you can open a string, and then say I want to give it I. So I put the bracket, the opening bracket I, closing bracket. You don't need to put the slash I in there as well. You don't need that. Just put the opening one in. And what that allows is it allows the italic tags, the I tags, but not the h1 tags, because the h1 tags aren't in this exception list. The second uh, second argument is, is the exception list. So if I gave it h1 instead of i, I'd get the h1, but tags wouldn't be um, italic. If I give it both, then there'd really be no point in uh, doing that. Uh-oh, what have I going here? It just allows me to use both those tags, but anything else, like say I wanted to use a b tag, a bold tag, that would work, that'll just be regular, instead of being in bold, in case if I swapped it out, you know, this would be bold now. You see how it is. Now in order to use both these examples really effectively, if you really want to keep everything out, you can use both of them together. So you can use strip tags and HTML entities. Now, what's your, but you need to uh, make sure that you use HTML entities after you use strip tags, because you'll see in a sec, I'll, I'll show you how not to do it. So right now I have HTML entities around the, the string and then strip tags, which is not going to work because it's just going to give us a whole bunch of crap. It's not actually stripping any of the tags because HTML entities is made all the things HTML, all these weird um, and GTs and and LTs. Now, the reason for this is that HTML entity converts it all and strip tags looks for specifically the actual HTML. So if you just reverse the order and put HTML entities on the outside and strip tags, you can still use all the arguments on the inside. 
then it will work. See? Then we have a little bit of a mess up here because I didn't put a space or a, a BR. So it says this has tags and this because I have and this. I'll remove that. But as you see, our comment, pretending this is a comment, is completely safe. You can't, there's, there's nothing there, it's just plain text. Alright, so thanks for watching. I hope you uh, liked it. Hope you learned something. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And I will get back to you as soon as I can because I check my email, in my email pretty often. And I'd say, I don't know, a few times a day. So your question will be answered quickly. Thank you for watching.